was creepy. And Mrs. Espinosa looks very, very creepy. My leg starts to just snap. I'm Robert Hall. I own Almost Human. We created all the makeup effects and props and special disgusting things for quarantine. He's a super realistic artist. Robert Hall can create a prosthetic and put it on a person and you cannot tell where the rubber meets the flesh. We sat down with Drew and John in the beginning and talked about different looks. We wanted the infected to not look too zombie-like. We wanted them to exist in the real world. So we went and looked at the symptoms of rabies and broke it down. Like, if your lungs are filling up with air, you're gonna have a hard time getting oxygen, so your skin might turn a little blue. Originally, we conceived the ideas for some of these infected people that had sort of a more jaundice sort of skin tone as opposed to the, the pale, sort of bluish white look. And we were trying to go down a little bit of a different road, but ultimately, I think those guys said that something to do with it, they looked like they had herpes or something. So, so we, we ixnate on the, on the yellow skin tone. He really helped implement and added a lot of uh, his idea of having their teeth breaking if they're gnashing their teeth may break up a little bit over time, or their lips might get cut up from that kind of thing. Ultimately, we decided that we would just take all the reference material that we could find, all the, um, all the videos, all the photos of actual rabies victims, be it animals, humans, whatever that was, and take that and expound on that and really push each one of those symptoms to, you know, the 10th degree. You know, the, the saliva, the excessive moisture glands, the self-mutilation, all, all of those characteristics. We had very distinct stages of infection that we wanted him to hit, depending on when each particular character got infected. There were a series of stages that we, that we tried to stick to with the methodology of how they would evolve. The first stage was just confusion. And then we would start to introduce some small changes makeup-wise within the stages. And that would be, you know, slightly more pale. And then the salivary glands would start to really excrete and get really crazy. <laughs> One of the things Rob brought to this that was amazing was uh, bromo powder or something. It's something people used to use for upset stomachs like in the 30s or something like that. And he mentioned that to uh, Stacy Shabosky, who plays Elise in the film. And uh, she went home and, and practiced with it for weeks until she had the, the drooling right. At first I thought I could rely totally on the bromo fizz because it foams you up. But if you do that, then you just get this ridiculous mouthful of foamy white and it doesn't look scary at all. It just looks ludicrous. So. I realized you have to be a little bit dehydrated. So before my scenes, I'll stop drinking water like an hour before because the perfect, the perfect drool is the kind that uh, hangs really thick and it's so thick and long. I've actually, after an hour of shooting, I've actually been able to take my finger in my drool and go, <laughs> and do stuff where it doesn't break for like, you know, I could get a pile about that big. We used a lot of, you know, KY jelly and slime and, you know, relied on the actor's own uh, irritation from their contact lenses to uh, create the tear duct uh, moisture. Yeah, one challenge we faced with this was uh, the contacts themselves. Uh, you know, it was a very dusty building and, you know, the contacts don't just go around, you know, the, the middle part of the eye, but they, they, they're huge and they sort of go over the whole eyeball. And the way this movie is, we shoot all day, so basically I'll have these on all day, and then my eyes will be irritated. I know it. Straight up for the left, and then down towards the very tip of your nose. Very good. Stay down. Look all the way up. How's that look? Got a big bubble there, but and over time, certain people didn't take very well to them. <laughs> um, like one piece of dust or something in one of those just drives people out of their minds. There we go. Yep, most of it's gone. How's that look? <laughs> The Thin Man was interesting uh, 
from the script because it wasn't really described a whole hell of a lot. John and Drew certainly knew what they wanted him to look like, and then I, I guess they sort of left it open for interpretation. He's sort of the uber-evolved version of all of these people that we've seen throughout the story. So he had to be scary, and he had to be creepy, and he had to have those same characteristics that we put in everyone else, but just pushed really far to the extreme. You see that scene, I mean, arguably, that's the scariest scene in the film. I still am not sure if that was a guy or a girl. Like, I'm not really sure what's going on there, but it's, it's freaky. There's this weird androgynous creature who's, like, probably the most terrifying thing I've ever seen put on film. Another big challenge for us was the way we were shooting it. And action! All of these effects had to be invisible. Traditionally, if I was going to do an effect where I was going to make my own head, you know, my own neck spurt blood, we would just have a guy right here with some tubes running out of my pants, and he'd be pumping blood, and I'd be going, ah. There couldn't be big tubes running, you know, out of somebody to someone else working, you know, 10 feet away. So we had to really go back to square one and rethink every single effect in this movie. We couldn't do any of it the way that we would normally do it. So we had to work with the set designers, you know, we had to work with Gary, and pretty much everybody, the, D the DP can and everyone to figure out, okay, where can we hide tubes? And, and in certain situations, we would literally have to block out scenes with all the rigs and everything on people, drill holes up from the other level, and then have monitors down there so that we could see where we were pumping blood or where we were operating you know, mechanical appendages and things. So that, that was the most difficult thing, was literally every single gag, the easy way that you would do it, you couldn't do it. He really brought a lot of interesting ideas to it and, and totally got where we wanted to go with this and was able to, you know, use his effects to, to keep us in the real world but add a real dramatic flair. I think it's really a magic artistry that he uh, puts together on these films.